Hey, Divi Nation, thanks for dropping by our documentation to learn all about Divi's blog module. Now, of course, everybody wants a blog on their website, so this is one of our most important modules that you can use and understand, and most importantly, master. And in this video, we're gonna give you the foundation of that mastery by showing you how to add content to your blog module, and of course, style it so that it looks beautiful, compelling, and fits in with your own unique web design. Check it out. In this video, I'm gonna give you an overview of Divi's blog module. With Divi, it is pretty exceptional that even blogs can become a module. And in this case, it is. And when we, re and when we refer to blog, we actually mean the archive of your blog posts that normally resides on your blog page. But with Divi and this blog module, you can actually deploy this archive of blog posts anywhere on your website. And then using the many settings within the blog module, you can customize it uh, to have a grid layout or a full width layout, along with all of the design features necessary to make this fit the overall design of your website. Now let's take a closer look at the blog module first by showing you how easy it is to actually deploy one on your web page and also we're going to take a closer look at all the settings available to you. To do this I'm going to be using the visual builder and I'm going to first hover over my blog module that I have here which is displaying my archive in a grid layout and I'm going to delete it. Now this one before I delete it, this one has already been designed, but we're going to go ahead and make those design changes together. All right, I'm going to delete it. As you can see, I have a blog page, and within my blog page, I have a one column row in this section here. And I'm going to go ahead and add my blog module to this row. Go ahead and click Add New Module search for the blog module. Now, right out of the box, it looks significantly different in layout. That's because uh, by default, it's going to show a full width layout. I'm gonna skip ahead just to show you that this can be changed in the design tab. So if I go to my blog settings, go over to my design tab, and the first thing I see is layout. I'm going to click that and change it from full width to grid. Right out of the box, the grid layout looks really nice and fits uh, the design of my site. And it only needs some minor design changes to really match my design. So let's go ahead and go over these settings together. In the content tab, you have the ability to change the number of posts to be displayed at, um, whenever your blog is deployed. Right now, there is no limit set, so it's just going to display all of them. Right now, I have seven posts uh, here. So let's go ahead and limit it to six to show you what I mean. Once I limit it to six, you can see that that bottom one will not show up. And in fact, it will pop up this little pagination link here to click to show older entries. You may notice that with this current setup that your blog may not show up on your live site. And that's because you need to include your categories that you want displayed on your blog module. So since I don't have any selected, if I go to my live site, I may not see anything. So you may need to go ahead and select your categories and figure out which ones you want displayed on this page. In this case, let's say I only want to show photography. If I click photography, you'll notice that now my posts are limited to only those with the category of photography. This is helpful if you're wanting to create multiple sections on your website. Uh, to showcase only certain categories of uh, posts. I'm going to go ahead and showcase all of them for now. The metadata format is just a way for you to format how you want your date structure to look. You can change that here. The content 
section allows you to choose whether or not you want to show an excerpt or the full content of your post. Um, I wouldn't suggest using uh, the show content option when you're using a grid layout because it will look pretty funky and show all of that text and it, and it really wouldn't look right. This is more of an option for the full width layout whenever you don't want to um, show excerpts and you want to display the full content of your post. The offset number is helpful if you want to, you know, hide the, the first few posts. Maybe you want those to be featured elsewhere and you can choose to offset them, um, for instance, by number. Let's say I don't want to show this first post here. I can offset it by one and then it now it's gone. It only starts with the next one in order. The elements section allows you to, you know, show and hide a number of these elements within your blog card here. You can choose to hide your featured images if you like. You could also choose to show a read more button. If I toggle that on, you can see that the read more button will show up right underneath your excerpt on each of these cards. Now, um, you'll notice that this read more button is red color, and that's because it's going to, by default, pull from your global accent color that you have set in your theme customizer. You can, of course, override that color in the design tab, and we'll see how to do that a little later on. These next three, or four, I should say, control what you want seen in your metadata here underneath your title. I could choose to show or hide my author. I could choose to show or hide my date and also my categories. If I choose to show none of them, you can see that none of the metadata shows up and I just have a nice clean title and text. Also the comment count as well. By default, it will show no comment count, but if you choose, you can put the comment count there. I'm gonna go ahead and enable all of these features so you can see them. And there you go. Adding a background is a good option. Here you can see that you have the option of choosing a grid tile background color. The grid tile refers to this section here, which is white. If I were to change that one to a, you know, red or something, you can see how that might be a, a good option for you if you want to customize the way your cards look. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to its default for now. And let's go ahead and jump over to the design tab. And as we mentioned before, you have the option of changing your layout from grid to full width. You can also use this drop shadow feature, which adds this drop shadow around each of your cards here, or content blocks if you're using full width. You can also choose to show a featured image overlay. Right now, if I hover over these images, um, they are clickable, but there is no hover effect and there's no overlay. I could choose this option to turn on my featured image overlay. And you can see that by default, then when I hover over it, it has this nice feature with this icon and the color of the icon again is pulling from my global accent color from theme options. But I can of course override these designs uh, with the following settings here. Uh, you have overlay icon color here, which you can change along with the hover overlay color. Right now it's kind of this, you know, semi-transparent white because of the opacity there. Uh, but I could, you know, if I wanted to change that to a red, and of course it's too dark, so I need to pull down my opacity here so that I can see through it a little bit better. And then I, I would then need to go back here and change my icon color to white. You can see that a whole different kind of design. 
and you can change the icon itself here from this plus icon to anything you want. You can change your text orientation here. If you wanted, let's say, more of a centered orientation, you can do that in one click. By default, it will be left aligned. Of course, you can add a text shadow to your content. Uh, you could also edit uh, all of the text elements within your blog post here. You could change the title, which is an H2 here, and you can customize it however you want. I'm going to go ahead and change my title font to fit my, the design of my page here. I'm going to change it to Oswald. I'm going to go ahead and give it a bold font weight. And I'm going to make it a font style of uppercase. All right. By default, my title text is 18 pixels. I'm going to increase or set it to here 24. The title text color um, is taking on its default, uh, but I'm going to change it just slightly. And lastly, I'm going to increase my line height a little bit from my header to a 1.3. It gives me a little bit more spacing there. For my body text, I can customize uh, any of the text within the body of my post here within my card. Um, right now, it's taking on the default. So I'm going to actually change my body font to Roboto. We'll keep all of these the same um, and I'm going to increase my body text to 16 and let's go ahead and change my body line height to something like 1.9 the meta text refers to this text right underneath your title there and it can be customized as well I'm going to go ahead and match my font to Roboto I'm going to put my meta text to 14 pixels keep my meta text color actually I'm gonna decrease the opacity there just to kind of make it a little bit lighter alright the pagination text can be also customized that refers to this little text down here um, and that links back to our older entries Maybe I want to just increase that a bit to 18 pixels. The sizing option here allows me to control the width of my blog here. If I wanted to decrease it, I could do that. And of course, after you decrease it you, here in this case, you would want to select this alignment to make it centered. I could add some additional spacing like margin and padding to my overall blog module here. I could also customize the border of my blog cards here, uh, which by default is like a one pixel light gray border, but I can go ahead and change that along with the, the border radius, uh, giving it rounded corners if I wanted to. So if I increase the width of my border, you can see that change. I'm actually going to get rid of my border width and let's continue on. Now here the box shadow can be applied to all of your cards here. Now this box shadow is very similar to the drop shadow that we referred to earlier. If we go back to our layout section here where it says use drop shadow um, this is going to be by default kind of like a help get you started kind of design um, but if you're going to use a custom box shadow down here it's a good idea to go ahead and deselect this one and then uh, go ahead and customize your box shadow here you can also use animation uh, for your blog module here Under the Advanced tab, you can always target your blog module. 
using an external style sheet and adding those unique CSS IDs and classes here to help you do that. You can also target any of the individual elements of this module in a very convenient way by entering some custom CSS in any of these boxes here that correspond to each of the elements. And you can also choose to disable this module on phone, tablet, and desktop. Go ahead and save our changes. And as you can see, we are done and we have a nice looking blog using our blog module. And that's our overview of the blog module.